All right. Let's talk about electrochemistry. So we talk about electrochemistry. All of this revolves around redox. So and for redox, Leo the lion says what? No, it's grrr. So Leo the lion says grrr. What does this mean? Leo is uh, lose electrons oxidation and gain electrons reduction. What's the other inferior acronym to this one? Yeah, but if you like say oil rig, it just sounds dumb. So one, I don't like that, first of all. But two, it says oxidation is loss and reduction is gain of what? It doesn't have an E in it, and so I don't like it for that reason either. But it's just semantics. Either way, you got to know that oxidation is the loss of electrons. Reduction is the gain of electrons. I don't care which mnemonic uh, you, really, you really use there. Um, cool. So what's your name? No, oh, don't go there yet. We're going to come there soon, but don't go there yet. Just deal with def one definition at a time. But what's your name, by the way? Marcus. How's your hand-eye coordination? <laughs> Marcus. Like that. I'm going to throw a marker at you. Okay. Can you? Sweet. If markers were electron, what just happened to Marcus? He got what? Electrons. He got electrons, so he got reduced. He gained electrons. What happened to me? Oxidized. I got oxidized. Redox reactions. You can catch, you just can't throw, not a problem. So <laughs> redox reactions are electron transfer reactions. The species being oxidized transfers electrons to the species being reduced. That's the way it works. Cool. So first part is you've got to know your definitions. The hallmark of a redox reaction is that because elect, you know, electrons are being transferred, elements are going to change their oxidation states. And if this is the hallmark, the way of identifying a redox reaction, then you better know how to identify oxidation states. You probably did this in Gen Chem 1. I'm going to give you a slightly different set of rules than what you probably learned in Gen Chem 1, just because I think it's a little easier in the end. So if you look, those rules are on your handout. And what does the first rule say? Elements in their zero are in their zero oxidation state when they're in their elemental form. So what do I mean by their elemental form? Yeah, it could be like Cl2 or O2. Notice it doesn't even have to be the standard state form, right? O2, gas, is a standard state form. But if I have O3, ozone, that's still an elemental form. It's not standard state, but it is elemental still. And so an elemental form is when you only see a single element there. Notice these are three separate compounds. But you only see a single element there, and there's no charge listed at all. I don't care if it's monatomic, diatomic, triatomic, but as long as there's only one element in that compound, if you will, it's an element, uh, and there's no charge listed, that's the elemental form, that's the zero oxidation state. All the rest of the rules then apply to compounds where we're not in the zero oxidation state. So if you look, the first thing you want to identify, you follow these rules in order, is you find group one or group two metals. You find group one or group two metals. So in this first compound, we're going to do MgCl2. Do you have any group one or group two metals? Mg is group two. And so group two metals in a compound, when they're not elemental, are always what? They're always plus two. Cool. And you follow these rules in order. But the minute you get only one element that you haven't assigned a charge to, an oxidation state to, you stop following the rules and skip straight to the very last rule, rule number six. And the last element balances everything else out. In this case, is there any overall charge on MgCl2 as a compound? No. So in this case, we mean it balances that out to zero. So in this case, what do each of the chlorines have to be to balance this out? Negative one. Cool. So that's the other half of the coin. An oxidation state is always per single atom. You might total it up in calculating other oxidation states, but if they ask for the oxidation state, it's per single atom. So when I look for the oxidation state of chlorine here, well, notice there's two of them, right? And that's a total of a minus two charge. But if they're asking for the oxidation state, it's still just minus one each is the way it's defined. OK, go to the next one here. Here you've got a molecular compound. Things will be a little more difficult. So it's a compound, so we skip the first rule. There's no elemental forms here. It's a compound. So the next one says group one metals are plus one, and group two metals are plus two. Do I have any group one or group two metals? Nope. Next rule is for hydrogen. Hydrogen's almost always plus one. 
The only time hydrogen is not plus one, well, besides elemental anyways, is when it's only with a metal. It's just with a metal only. That's the only time, and that's minus one that cares. But you hardly ever see that. And so, do I have any hydrogen? Nope, okay, skip that rule then. So next rule, transition elements are determined based on what anion they're with, based on the context. I don't have any transition elements, so skip that rule. Number five, the most electronegative elements get their typical oxidation state. This is what you usually do for molecular compounds and polyatomic ions. So who's the more electronegative, nitrogen or oxygen? Oxygen, what, based on where he is in the periodic table, what is oxygen's typical oxidation state? Two, if he gained two electrons, he'd look like a noble gas configuration, that's why he's typically negative two. So that's what I mean by typical oxidation state. But once he's assigned, you stop following the rules. And what does nitrogen just have to be to balance this out? Good. Plus four to balance it out. So if you struggle with getting these, you can make an algebra equation out of this too, right? You can say two times whatever nitrogen is plus four times whatever oxygen is balances it out, in this case, to an overall charge of zero. And so if you just substitute in the negative two for oxygen, then you could solve for what nitrogen would have to be. So you can make an algebra equation out of it if you struggle with this. Cool, next one here. It's a compound, so we just skip rule number one, nobody in their elemental form. What do you look for first? Group one, group two, do we have one? Yeah, sodium, group one plus one. Then next rule, what, is the next, what are we looking for in the next rule? Hydrogen, do I have hydrogen? Yeah. yeah, and almost always hydrogen is plus one. The only time it would be minus one again if, is if it's just a metal and hydrogen and nothing else. So a metal and hydrogen and nothing else. So that's not this. Still gonna put a plus one on hydrogen. Okay, I still got more than one element left, so I keep following the rules. Do I got any transition elements? Nope. So, and then I go to more electronegative. Who's more electronegative? Oxygen, what's oxygen's typical oxidation state again? Negative two. And so carbon is left to balance the rest of this out. He's the last element standing, skip straight to the last rule. Well, we're kind of there anyways, right? In this case, but what does carbon have to be to balance this all out? Plus four, plus four. Sweet. So here, nobody's elemental, it's a compound, so skip rule one. Do I have any group one or group two metals? Nope. Do I have any hydrogen? Nope. So transition metals. Do I have any transition metals? Yeah, I got a big fat transition metal right here. Technically, it's not just the transition metals, but all the ones under the staircase that separates the, the metals and non-metals as well. So I didn't know how to kind of name that, but it's the transition metals and those. Any metals that are not group one, group two, essentially. So here, the only way to figure out what copper is, is by knowing what anion he's with. And what, what do we call this anion right here, this polyatomic? Sulfate, which means if you forgot your polyatomic ions, their, their charges, you gotta go back and memorize that. So what is the charge on a sulfate ion? Negative two. So what must copper be in this case? Plus two. One sulfate, one copper. If sulfate's negative two, then copper's gotta be plus two. Okay, transition metal's done. So you always get the transition metal based on what it's with. But now we keep going on. After transition metal, we deal with now Who's more electronegative, sulfur or oxygen? Oxygen, so oxygen gets his typical value of negative two again. And there's four of them, but they're negative two each. And what's sulfur left to be to balance this out? Plus six. Cool. Couple more examples. This next one is what we call a peroxide. In fact, you guys probably recognize this as being hydrogen peroxide. It's not the only example of a peroxide. So in Gen Chem 1, when we taught you oxidation states, we made you like kind of memorize peroxides as a special case. You should recognize when you have a peroxide. One of the rules, I hate special cases. And if you've got to remember all the special cases, that's a lot of exceptions to shove in your head for a test. This set of rules, you don't have to memorize those. You just have to follow the rules. Any group one or group two metals? Nope. Any hydrogen? Yeah. Yep, what's hydrogen? Positive one. And now you skip straight to rule six. You only got one element left. And what's oxygen got to be to balance everything out? Negative one. In a peroxide, oxygen's minus one, not minus two. So that's why the rules are designed the way they are, so that you don't have to memorize this as an exception. Because you could have H2O2, Na2O2, K2O2, and those are all peroxides. And if you follow the rules, the minus one on oxygen will just fall out naturally. 
and you won't actually have to memorize this, the special cases of when you do and don't have a peroxide. So KO2, who do you sign first? Got a group one metal. And potassium has a group one metal, it's plus one. And so then you go to oxygen. He's the last element left, and so he's just going to have to what? Balance it out. Good. This isn't very common, but it's a fraction. It's negative one half. This is called a super oxide, and they're super. Cool. Last one here. This is sodium azides, which in, when you, the explosive stuff in your airbags. So who do you sign first? Group one metal. So he's plus one. And then nitrogen's your only element left. So he just has to be what he has to be to balance it out. So what he's got to be? Awesome. Negative one third. The azide ion is a polyatomic ion that has three nitrogens. And on those three nitrogens are sharing one extra electron. So on average, each of them is negative one third. Cool. So you can have fractions. Just want to make sure you've seen kind of just about everything. But if you follow those rules, you're golden. Questions?